Katie, I guess you're still short after the pain of the last couple of months. And what changed for you? No, um, trend signals have finally turned long. And I think this is an epic signal for the market because we have been short for nine quarters. This has been one of the longest shorts in trend following history over the last 20 to 40 years. And I think this is important because it signals the end of the tightening cycle and it suggests that we're going through a regime change and that we need to start looking at the next phase of the bond market. And for me, that's looking for a steep real yield curve. And I'm trying to think about what is going to be the catalyst for that as the next phase of this trade. It's one thing not to be short, Katie. It's another thing to be aggressively long. Where does trend following signal send you? So right now they're still rather muted, but I think the key that we're gonna have to watch is how fast are cuts coming. And I also think we have to be a little bit nervous too. We need to watch what's happening with supply and treasuries to look at the end of the curve to see what's happening there as well as we try to navigate this year as weaker data might come in and as we try to roll over debt throughout the year. So I think this is gonna be a year to watch the shape of the curve and to see where uh, the curve actually settles out. When you talk about a steepening in the yield curve, it can come from two places. It can come from short-term yields coming down in response to Fed rate cuts, or it could come to, uh, from longer-term yields rising aggressively. Are you basically saying because you are no longer short treasuries that you see it more coming from the front end with more aggressive rate cutting cycle than people are expecting? Well, that's the trade that everyone's focused on. And I think that's where everyone's focused right now. You were just mentioning it that, you know, we're focused on how soon are cuts coming um, and when are we going to see the, sh the shorter end of the curve sort of deepen so that we have this, this more steep yield curve. I think where you have to worry, the typical thing that would be the challenge is if we start to see more challenging uh, effects on the long end of the curve, aka, uh, you know, poor, poor fixed income market on the long end. So that would happen if we had trouble um, in terms of valuations for debt. And so that would happen mm -hmm. if we had poor, you know, poor auctions in the Treasury market. So that's something I'm going to yeah. be watching this year. Katie, let's talk to Global Wall Street right now that hangs on your every word on trend based CTA uh, uh, technical analysis. So we had a trend to a higher yield in the 10 year. We've rolled over. The, the indeterminate point I call soup. Are we in a trend of soup now, indeterminate? Or can you state that we have a trend towards lower yield? Is a trend in place of higher prices and lower yield? So we hit the inflection point and we've started moving towards longer, uh, longer signals, especially in most asset classes, particularly equities. Uh, we've also seen um, very strong short signals in the US dollar. So we've really seen that inflation trade that we were seeing for pretty much two years dissipate and move past a point where we're moving towards right. a new trend. You sound like Louise Yamada there talking about dissipation. What will it take to get trend in place where there's a permanence to weak dollar, a permanence to lower yield? I think rate cuts, as expected, would definitely um, continue that trend strongly. Of course, not as weak data if we continue to see this sort of soft landing be a possibility. Um, and I think that is going to be in question, of course, because my general view this year is that we're going to see a lot of variation in outcomes. Um, I want to point out one key fact. A, bond volatility still remains elevated and bond stock correlation still remains positive. Those are two technical factors that are very different than the classic regime. So we need to navigate those first before we can figure out sort of have we moved to sort of back to where we were or are we moving somewhere else? Hey, Katie, let's finish there. We caught up with someone just yesterday from JP Morgan. Lisa mentioned them, Phil Camparelli. He talked about 60-40 being back and that 40 would enable you to play defense. Is there any reason to believe that it is back? Are you seeing anything that suggests that correlation is going back to what some people might call slightly more intuitive? I think everyone wants that. But I think the worry is what I just said. We're seeing very different asset class relationships. So we need to watch 
inflation and watch for how inflation behaves because inflation changes the nature of asset class relationships. If we should see inflation have upside risk potential, we will see more challenge to that 60-40 narrative. If, in fact, we can keep inflation under control, I agree. The 60-40 is a good place to be. But so watching inflation and keeping that in check, and that's why the Fed is probably being more conservative and being careful um, because they want to make sure that's the case.